And we're back with another episode of In Horror We Trust. What's your favorite scary movie? Yeah, you X. saw X today. Directed by the lovely Ty West. Yes, who has not come back to horror in quite a few years. Uh, his last film was in 2013, and it was The Sacrament. Also a pretty good film. Yes. My personal favorite of his oh, is um, okay. not Sacrament. <laughs> that that one's close, but is um, House of the Devil. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, same. Um, I, I mean, this is, what, the only the second example, but I do like his uh, 70s period movies. Oh, my God. Movies, horror yes. movies. He does them so great. It, like, really feels like a 70s film. He really can capture that era. Yeah. Yeah. But also, like, keep it modern. Like, oh, yeah. Definitely. Know. Especially with this one. Mm -hmm. This one had a lot of great just mix of... Well, the era within the setting was perfect. It felt yeah. like it. But just, like, the era of production that they he actually made the film also felt just modern and, like, fresh. You could not have phrased that any better because there was so much that was so new and we had never seen really before in horror films. It was kind of cool and it was effective. So overall thoughts of the movie, Carissa, did you like it? Did you dislike it? Would you go see it again? Would you recommend it? I loved it. I would definitely see it again and I absolutely recommend it. Um, it felt like something I had been looking for this year for sure the type of horror film that i have been craving it was a good ass time it had it had so much in it just so yeah. much um and not in a way that's like just overcrowded or anything but it all worked together so great and there's some funny funny parts i love the references made i loved the practical effects the fucking shots. There's so many shots that were just so cool. And uh, definitely the editing. We were talking about this before. The editing was just so, so good and different. I'm going to go ahead and agree with everything Carissa um, said. It was, it was really fun. It was great. It was not only fun and entertaining, but it was like, it was beyond that. It was very well crafted. Um, it was pretty immaculate with its editing. It was super tight. There were no moments that felt like it was lull and you were just like waiting for it to pass by. Um, yes, absolutely. It, the pacing was perfect. And um, yeah, I think it's a movie that we all were waiting for, that we wanted to see, that we knew A24 would deliver. Um, mm. And it was just overall a really, really, really good good film like I enjoyed it a lot I would see it again I would absolutely recommend it to people go out and see it and honestly see it in theaters yes see it in theaters yes. because there's so much unique sound design that just deserves those speakers oh my god yes and just seeing sound. it oh, it was immaculate there was just so much layering in sound that borrowed from dialogue and it would it was beautifully crafted just go yes. see it in theaters your eyes and your ears will thank you for it. And the communal experience, um, just there's a yeah. lot of, you know, cringe, but intentionally cringe. You're supposed to cringe um, scenes and just he, kind of feeling that together. It's just very, <laughs> I don't know, it just feels so right. <laughs> and, Absolutely. You know, you're all just getting this, share, having this shared experience of horror. That is what I love. I love watching, you You gotta love watching horror movies in the theaters. Obviously there are some times where, like I had mentioned this earlier, just some people can totally ruin the movie experience for you, but more often than not, especially with horror films, it's super fun to watch with other people in, in the theater. In a setting, yeah. yeah. It, um, it was really fun to, to hear everyone collectively gasp at some of the gore and like wince and then yes. um hearing people kind of giggle in like moments of like <sighs> just almost comedic relief yeah so it was it was kind of it was kind of cool after, after seeing the trailer when you first saw the trailer or 
What were your expectations going into this, if any? What did you think it was about? So I didn't even know that this movie was a thing, honestly, until uh, Carissa had sent me the trailer and was like, hey, check out this new Ty West A24 movie. And I was kind of shocked. I was like, wait, Ty West is coming out with a new movie? Count me in. And of course, I think we've all like share the sentiment that A24 has become synonymous with just like these really outrageously good films. Uh, maybe the good part is subjective to, to audiences, but um, they are really outrageous and well-crafted films. Yeah. And so as soon as um, Carissa had sent me that text after viewing it, I was just like, hell yes, let's go see this. I'm here for it. It looks great. Yeah. Let's do this. Immediately was on board. Yeah. Honestly, definitely super interested right when I knew it was a film coming from Ty West. <laughs> um, I think Adam and I had seen the trailer when we saw Scream. It was one of the trailers. Oh, before really? Scream. Like the second time we saw it because we saw Scream the second time yeah. after we saw it together. But um, yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck, this looks awesome and yeah. crazy. And yeah, I think my expectations going into it, besides it being good, was I thought it had some kind of supernatural element to it. I thought like a possession type of thing going on. You know, you just and I also was like kind of scared because it seemed like they showed a lot in the trailer. And I was like, I'm sure there's something there's usually some kind of twist or alternative. Def just not what you think with Ty West that goes into his stories. Um but yeah, I thought it was going to be something similar to The Visit and just like creepy old lady who at night just gets like, has this kind of possessed, I don't know, just possessed motives going on and mm -hmm. she just is going around being a creep and <laughs> kill, starts killing off these kids. But I'm very glad that I was wrong because this was way more interesting. <laughs> Um, my interpretation of the trailer was completely different. I thought it was going to be kind of Texas Chainsaw-esque, where it was mm -hmm. going to be like a murderous family of some nature, but I didn't know how the whole making a movie part of it was going to tie into that whole... I just, I wasn't sure how it was going to go along, but I was convinced. I can definitely see that. Yeah. Te Texas Chainsaw vibes for sure. The yeah. house, the setting, the group of kids in the yeah, 70s the in a van. Mm -hmm. And then just the, the color palette, too, yeah. was very reminiscent yes. of Texas. So I, that's what I... I mean, yeah. I guess we were kind of right in our own ways. There's a little of both elements into it. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely think they're just kind of presenting it that way just to subvert your expectations, oh, obviously. obviously. Yeah, definitely. All right, so spoiler warning for everyone that does not want X spoiled. Please proceed with caution because we are going to get into the nitty gritty of it all. Yeah. Yeah. And trust us, you you don't want to know. You don't want to know. Go into it blind. Don't yeah. listen if you have not seen it yet. Please just go and see it. You won't regret it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> With that said, can we just start with how brilliant that opening scene was? Just yeah. that opening shot. Yeah. It was beautiful. I mean, it was, go ahead and describe yeah. it. Yeah. So when you look at it, it's um, it looks like it's shot in like standard aspect ratio. And it's this view of, was it the house with the cop car? Yeah, with one yeah, cop car. Yeah, with one cop car. And you think it's just in that aspect ratio you're not really sure what's going on um you're kind of hanging out there and it, it lingers on that for quite a moment and so you're just kind of like okay what's this cop car like what's going on and then all of the sudden it um starts to slowly pull in and the shot just gets wider and wider and wider and you realize that it is not shooting in standard aspect ratio and that it's actually widescreen and um the two side panels that were shortening the screen were actually from the inside of a building and those were walls and it was coming out of a doorway yeah 
And then so. it revealed what was on the right and the left as it came in closer. And it was just, it, it blew my mind. Yeah. I was like, this is freaking amazing. Yeah, and once you see, once it pulls in, are two more cop cars on the sides, mm -hmm. and it gives you a little more context, like, oh, something happened Something here. happened this here. This is mm -hmm. a big scene. Yeah, of, which of turned time. out to be a crime scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But it was, it was just so brilliant. It was brilliant. It's so simple yeah. and so brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> the littlest things sometimes, the just, attention to detail. Yeah. Adds so much. Yeah. Other little moments that were um, spot on with just shots or editing. Can you think of any that like really stood out to you? Just in general, I wanted to bring up, he, I noticed he did a lot of those long pull-ins or pull-outs yes. and long pans where it's like, it's still, and then it pans, but it pans like longer than you think it would yeah. pan. The uh, length of the um, slow pans and the slow pull-ins and pull-outs, I think add to the dread of the movie Yeah, where it just helps build anxiety in that moment because you're like wait are they hanging on to this for a reason is mm -hmm. something gonna pop out in like yeah. the corner of a screen that i'm just not seeing yet and it makes you scan yes. like back and forth back and forth just like waiting in anticipation for yeah. that potential jump scare or, or like am i missing something that's yeah. already there mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it was very very well um thought out and it added yes. to the pacing of the film there are a lot of times mm -hmm. where there'd be a frame that like a character would come into, but then they would end up in a part of the frame that I did not expect them to stop. Like, yep, they would keep going and then get uncomfortably close to the camera. There was a specific scene, I think, with Maxine's character in the kitchen when she's like looking around and she's coming into the kitchen towards the camera and you think that she's going to stop at a medium, but she comes up real close. And I was just like, boop, I think that's your nose. <laughs> but I really like that. It's just a lot of stuff that I, I just didn't expect, even with just your normal way of viewing the movie. Absolutely. Oh, another, I guess, editing style. All of their, uh, I believe it's called intercutting, mm -hmm. um, was really just interesting mm -hmm. it was interesting not again not what you would expect and you're just sitting there staring at like an image that's kind of lingering and then all of a sudden you're like what the hell is that yeah. like it was just it was yeah it was something else yeah specifically one part comes to mind with that for me is with towards... her swimming no but that oh, was okay also that one was one. a good one yeah, yeah. um well, the first one that comes to mind is towards the end, after a lot of shit has gone down already, and Maxine is making a break for it and running from the guest house. And it shows her getting out from under the bed, starts getting up and running through the rooms, but it starts intercutting with a woman already running, making it to the van. And then it goes back and forth between Maxine still running out of the guest house and her running up to the van and already getting in the van. And at first I thought it was a different woman because I just wasn't, I was like, okay, yeah. they're cutting back to another character, you yep. know? But it was the same, just like two different the angles. Angles, but yep. times, like times. Time, time period, time, season, yeah. not angles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, timing of the, yeah. within the story. You know, it's like disorienting, but in a way that interests me. What I find really interesting about these unique edits too is that it keeps your focus when you feel like there's a lull in um a moment at all through the movie it interjects with this just insane cut and you're like oh Which it's almost funny. jarring mm -hmm. itself like they're yeah. not using a jump scare to kind of grab your attention they're using wild edits to kind of keep your focus and grab you back in so yeah. I don't think personally I would consider this a slow burn just because of the way that they paced it with yes, their edits. Absolutely. Very well said. And that was definitely something we were talking about in the car leaving the theater was even with some kills, there's a moment that they would intercut it with something completely different Yeah, and cut back and it's this bang in your face and Absolutely. definitely wakes you up and keeps you interested but it's just 
so much it made me jump yeah. like specifically one part in mind with the with the pitchfork <laughs> um, yeah through the holes oh my goodness and it's like you're staring at that scene and you know something bad is going to happen yeah you know yeah. it like you see this person staring at a three holes or out of these, well, not sit, he can't stare out of three holes at once, but <laughs> <laughs> there are these three holes in the wall, and you know he's th like trying to see what's behind mm -hmm. that, and you know the closer he gets his face to it, it's going to be bad news, but you're not expecting what it is, and it's so jarring, not because yeah. of the violence, mm -hmm. but because of the cut. Yeah. And it's not expected. Yeah. Yeah. It, it intercuts with uh, another character in a different part of in the main house and she turns on a light bulb and then just the cut of turning on the light bulb it switches back to him just immediately getting stabbed in the eyes with a pitchfork uh, <laughs> through the holes so good and it's like you're on hyper awareness at that point because you're like oh oh wait uh uh where are we and you it, know again it's just so brilliant because it, it makes you jump not by just a cheap scare another one of those moments not as um disorienting it, it made a little more sense why they how they intercut it but um filming the sex scenes oh between the characters yeah. and then intercutting with the with Pearl, the old woman back in her home, kind of a kind of imagining being in the same situation. But you you start getting a sense of like what oh, her she, fantasies what are. are yeah exactly that's yeah. exactly right. It, it was as if a fantasy in, that she's playing in her mind. Yeah, but is literally happening there. Yep, it was great. It makes me think in the end it should have been like. Well, from the looks of this, it looks like one fucked up porno. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what I thought was really interesting about this movie as well was that um, it kind of subverted your expectations with how horror movies usually present sex and, and nudity. Um, yes, of course, this movie did have that in there. I mean, the premise of the film was a bunch of kids going off well not children but young adults <laughs> going off to film um an adult film so there what there were sex scenes there um you were watching scenes that they were creating but then it kind of flipped it on its backside and it had you witness you know a sex scene between a very older couple yeah and so it kind of, in a way, I want to say, I mean, it didn't gross us out. It's totally normal, but it kind of makes you cringe a little and be like, I didn't need to see that. Yeah. So I thought it was clever because is that a commentary on like just sex and horror in general? Like, should we be kind of feel like, I don't know. It was interesting. And then with a third element of commentary, with what was being played on the screens in the older couple's house talking yeah. about sexuality and how it's a no-no and how you know we're, we're sinners. yeah how we're <laughs> sinners and how we're diverting away from traditional values so i think it adds this contextual kind of conversation of how we view sexuality and nudity in horror films because again even later in the movie, the women that have sex in the movie, like, based on traditional horror rules, they're supposed to be the first ones to be offed. Right. And guess what? That didn't happen. Yeah. The first person to be offed in the film wasn't taking part in that yeah. whatsoever, like, at all. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah. The, so that yeah. was really interesting. <laughs> it kind of threw it over its head, and it was yeah. like, we're going to take these traditional rules, and we're going to be like, uh-uh, nope, not doing it. Yeah. So it was kind of cool, because I don't know if you were sitting there doing that, but I was wondering, like, who's going to be first, you know? Like, regardless of the situation, because at that point, I don't think either of us recognized that it was going to be a slasher film. Yeah. Until you see the first kill, and then you're still kind of like, is is that yeah. what it's going to be? Yeah. I I'm not sure. I still was like, oh, there might be... There might be more to it. Yeah. But then it clearly became evident that, no, this is kind of a slasher. And so traditional slasher rules, mm -hmm. like the person who takes place in either 
doing drugs or having sex is probably going to be the first to to be offed and that wasn't the case in this so it was kind of a cool way to say fuck you to the tropes absolutely dang yeah that's funny i actually yeah. didn't think yeah. about that part yeah if i could just piggyback off that point <laughs> there <laughs> there's another way that the film had definitely subverted my expectations um also looking at, at sexuality and oftentimes in horror tropes oftentimes in horror movies the ones being brutalized and very sexually brutalized are women and obviously in history that is the case as well um but in this one it seems more to start to focus at least in that way of killing and that way of victimization happens more so on the men um pearl the old woman is missing being craved you know by a by a man yeah. she's missing her sexual life and being pretty and wanted um and so it turns out that the character lorraine played by jenna ortega um, when she's in the basement, she's locked in the basement, she finds a body down there and it's a younger looking man, naked, strung up, and you see it pan down to his penis and there's all these brutal markings around it and it just looks used and abused. But yeah, usually you would expect it to be a woman. And, and also when Pearl starts, she goes up to, his name's RJ? Yes. Um, and you know, she starts trying to kind of kiss on him and like have him touch her. Uh, and then he's the first one she murders brutally, absolutely savagely murdered. Um, and then she murders Wayne, the next, that the next victim's Wayne. Um, yeah. so yeah, I just thought that was also a cool way to flip the rules and the tropes on its head. It almost felt like she had a she almost had a hatred for men at that point because right. she wasn't getting what she wanted from a man. So those were her first targets. And then yeah. it was like the women were kind of an afterthought. Mm -hmm. um, the women were Absolutely. just kind of like, they are the fantasy that I want to be. So I'm going to kind of hang on to them and linger with them a little bit more because that's what I'm striving for. And even, like, yeah. even then it was just the specific girl. It was mm -hmm. Maxine that she was, really Focus stuck on, on yeah the other ones were definitely an afterthought another point that i wanted to make was how rj in the film kept making this statement that he wanted to create a very artistic porn he didn't want it to just be a porn filled with sex he wanted something artistic and he wanted it to be a porn that nobody's ever seen before I thought that was kind of an ironic commentary yeah. on the film itself because yeah. I think as audience members, we're kind of searching for that in horror. Especially if you're going to yeah. see an A24 horror film, you are that person that's like, no, I just want to see something different and artsy. I'm a cinephile. Yeah, so <laughs> I just thought that was really, really clever and it was just... I don't want to say mocking, but it was just kind of a cool self-awareness, self-awareness, maybe a point that was magnified as to kind of like, yeah, most people would view horror and just see it as just that, oh, it's just gore. Oh, it's just murder. Mm -hmm. But I think the greater commentary with it is kind of like, we as fans don't see horror as just gore and blood and murder. We see it as something artistic. And to crave and want something that's more than just that is something that we constantly seek out. So it was just kind of a cool reflection of like what our inner wants are and then seeing that on screen too. And I'm wondering if it was done purposefully or if it was just, you know, Making a fun job. Just making a fun job or even just like motive for his character arc. True. But it was still just really interesting to um, kind of have that thought lingering in the back of my head. Yeah. And that also reminds me of just 
the commentary and scream and talking about how elevated oh, horror. Oh, yeah. For people who have seen Scream 2022, I think that <laughs> remark of elevated horror has kind of stuck in everyone's mind. Yeah. And so knowing that that X was an A24 <laughs> release, I think, I don't know, I myself did. I'm sure you did too. But we were kind of like, is this going to be <laughs> elevated horror? Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, in a way, yeah, it kind of was. But I mean, not in a way that's like disrespectful to other movies that have come, you know, before that or anything of that sort. Okay, let me just say this. I think elevated horror is a is kind of a gross term to use for these movies. I don't think it's elevated in a sense where it's like, dogging on other people yeah. making them think that they're not smart enough to understand these movies or they're just superior at yes all. or superior in any sense what i think elevated horror is is horror movies being treated like any other film and mm -hmm. they're given the attention and they're allowed to take their time and build quality films yeah. and i think if all horror was treated that way and respected in that sense mm -hmm. and not just thought of as like oh it's just going to be trash because it's horror but actually respected as a genre, we would get more of these movies. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And that would be the norm and the expected and not one of these movies that's few and far in between that would like catch a nickname like Elevated Horror. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting that even the, the sh shitty horror fans have grown to love it on its own. Yeah. It's because it's, it's a not special being I, I really don't think it's being pretentious. Yeah. I just think it's stuff that we've all kind of wanted to see. We've all, at least, you know, for the most part, m like horror fans that I run into want the genre to be paid attention to in the way that yeah. these movies that have currently been coming out are giving. Yeah. So, because you always want something that you love and you have found super creative. And just a work of art. Yeah, you want, you want it to be it to nurtured. Appreciated. Yeah, yeah, nurtured, appreciated. Hell yeah. Yeah. That was, I'm sorry, that was my little side rant about no, elevated sure. horror. Because I know people it. are going to stick that term on this movie. <laughs> and I do not think it's that. I do not think it should be looked at in that kind of pretentious manner. It was it's, super fun. It was a great like, film. And it was just really well ride. done. And it deserves that recognition. It was a well-crafted, just fun ride. Mm -hmm. yeah? I was stating to Carissa, too, like, I feel like this might be, like, the new generation's kind of Texas Chainsaw, where it's going to yes. age that way and people are going to yes. love it in that way. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I, I also wanted to kind of go back to how much I liked those certain shots and the way yeah. he used pull-ins and pull-outs uh and long pans it felt very reminiscent of 70s horror specifically oh absolutely there's definitely i think it may be the exorcist and the omen but definitely a lot of 70s horror where i've seen a character it's either pulled pulled into them from very far or pulled out like very far yeah and I don't know. I just thought that was cool. I just it felt very reminiscent of seventies horror, and it made me believe it all the more, and felt nostalgic in a way. Not that I was fucking around in the seventies, but you know, yeah. I love seventies horror. No, I I agree. I think seventies um, horror films kind of took their time with everything that yes. they did. All their yes. shots took their time. They weren't in a rush to cut from scene to scene, or to cut from shot to shot, even. Yeah. Um, they just lingered where yeah. they were. And that kind of helped facilitate the unease. And yeah. Yeah. And he did this in House of the Devil too. Oh, uh, I noticed yeah. Too. That's what also what I really liked from that film was, yeah, his way of shooting the yeah. cinematography. The cinematography was, but aside from just the cool shots that he had in the movie, the editing itself, and besides the intercutting part of yeah. the editing, um, I really liked the cool transition um, wipes. Yes. Wipes. Yeah, wipe transitions. My first thought was I was like, Star Wars. <laughs> <Into the wipes. laughs> um, but it was really cool. Yeah, besides the wipes um, color, and specifically during one kill when a Pearl was killing RJ in front of the car at night, 
So the headlights are shining on them and she's just stabbing him in the neck deeper and deeper. And the blood starts spraying onto the headlights and it turns red with his blood. And then the whole frame, the whole shot turns red. It's just this bleeding of red that slowly seeps, you know, just over the shot. Yeah. I don't know. Um, that was just so badass. So badass. Such a cool visual. Honestly, and, one of my favorite kill scenes. Yes. Yeah. Probably our favorite of the yeah. year. Um, and what adds even more to that show was playing Don't Fear the Reaper. Oh my was, goodness. Was playing on the radio yes. in the car. And, you know, it was just perfect. It aligns so well. It was great. Yeah. And she just. Yeah, the whole buildup of that scene when he's driving the car and then sees her in the middle of the road and the way she's standing. You know, oh, so eerie. While playing Don't Fear the Reaper. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yep, she's yeah. the Reaper. She's <laughs> absolutely the Reaper. <laughs> Can we just talk about the whole concept of Pearl's character? Yeah, please. And how interesting of an, an antagonist she was. Yeah. Would you like some lemonade? <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> I just, her character was just so unsettling from the get-go when they get to the house and the um, the older gentleman, her husband, was talking Howard. about, Howard was mm-hmm. talking about how, you know, he just worries about his wife and how he doesn't want her wandering around the property and doesn't want her seeing certain things and so warns the group of young adults to like, you know, you better act right, don't let us see anything that you're up to. Um kind of deal and it was just it immediately made you wonder like okay is this lady some psycho religious prude that's just yeah, going yeah. to wreak havoc on all these mm-hmm. sinners right or like what what is the greater story here and then when she's finally revealed you see her as this old frail ass woman in the window yeah and she's you're just like oh and she's like really unsettling just like as far as image goes but then her mannerisms like add to it and that went along more f- for me personally that went along more with the idea that i had of kind of, of the, the visit, visit. Yeah. <laughs> and her just or like the conjuring when you know the mom looks up in the window and sees like a figure there i was just like possessed Honestly, some kind of shit going on the f- first person that came to mind immediately after <laughs> laying eyes on her was the old lady from the taking of deborah logan yes totally i absolutely. was like oh my was, god this lady's yeah. gonna be so scary yes like i was immediately yeah. terrified of her i mean her specific look yeah oh my god specific <laughs> she's aged scary. look was she's scary, scary. yeah she's scary she's so, so sunken in we kind of had this feeling while watching the film but we weren't sure but that it's not an actual older woman it's mia goth okay mia mia goth it's that actress um just put in old makeup yeah which is really kind of cool and it shows the talent of the makeup crew that they have on set yeah it was more so it was definitely early on that i was like Mm -hmm. oh well it's definitely a like a full body makeup on someone that's not this, <laughs> which reminded me of like yeah. the old body makeups and yeah. jackass. Totally I reminiscent. Was, I think it was like most of the shots that we saw in the beginning mm-hmm. were of her further away. Yeah. So we hadn't seen her face super up close. So she just looked terrifying. Yeah. And then when she got a little closer to the camera and we could see her, her profile a little bit more, like yeah. you could tell something was a little bit different and yeah. you could tell. I mean, maybe most people couldn't, but like a great makeup. Yeah, it, it was, was great. Fantastic. It was phenomenal. But she looked something. Yeah, that, yeah, she definitely looked old. And um, I didn't think I hadn't really thought. Oh, I was like, oh, it's Mia Goth in the old yeah. makeup until it started lingering more on her eyes, and you could see it. Yeah, I was like, the eyes are very similar. Yeah, the eye shape. And yeah, very cool. Really cool. God damn, Mia Goth did a great job. I know she did phenomenal. I that lady was so creepy. Yeah, <laughs> she was so creepy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, when it turns out you start finding out her motivations and her, yeah, just what she wants, mm-hmm. I felt very sympathetic for her, you know, and yeah. especially at, more at the first before she started going crazy killing everyone. <laughs> when she was, when she was interacting with her husband yeah, and she had like, um, what was it? She had seen, so, oh, that's Maxine what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she had seen the girl swimming. She had seen her naked body. Yeah. Um, I don't think she was 
glaring at it in a sexual manner or a lusting no. manner at all. Um, I just think she was purely envious. Yes. And she missed the time when she was young and youthful. And, you know, she felt, as you stated before, craved. Yeah. And um, so she goes back. She walks back to her house. And there's a moment that she's sharing with her husband where she's kind of, like, rubbing up on her body. And she's kind of starting to rub up on him. And you can tell that she's alluding that she wants some sort of... You know intimate moment with her husband yeah. and he immediately tells her you know we can't my heart mm. might not be able to handle it yeah. so in that moment you kind of empathize with this older woman who she, wants to feel sexual and wanted yeah. and desired by her husband she like dressed up she, she went in a cute she dress did. and was like Whirling around, she like brushed little... her hair and yeah. tried to put some effort into herself. Yeah. So you could have, like, oh. you could, I couldn't. Absolutely, we, yeah. I was like this poor old lady. Like, and this was after she had brought Maxine in and kind of had looked at an old picture of her. Yes. and I was like, I was, you know, you know, was that me. was me. I yeah. was young like you once, and yeah. like you could tell she was fantasizing about a previous time yeah and kind of reminiscing about you know how beautiful she was and how much you know her husband wanted her yeah and yeah that was really sad but then <laughs> but then <laughs> the lady just starts getting very creepy with her sexuality and it just does not stop when the cast of the you know the group starts filming their porno mm -hmm. And there's a moment where she sneaks on down and uh, is peering through the window while they're doing a sex scene. Yes. Particularly when Max is doing her sex scene. And you can tell she's just envious. Just over the whole the whole situation. Yeah. Just the sex looks good. <laughs> um, <laughs> and her body and her skin. Yeah. 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 And then it just builds, and her jealousy builds, and the the trick, the snapping point was when RJ, I think, goes up to her to make sure she's okay, and she starts kind of coming on to him, and he rejects, rejects her. her. Yeah. Like clearly, is like, oh, please, don't. I don't want to see that. He says, I don't want to see that. And yeah, then, and right I, when he said that, I think it was the the accumulation of it yeah. too, because I don't think it was just specifically RJ rejecting oh, her. No. I think it was her husband rejecting her. And then RJ rejecting her. Yeah. And then that's kind of when she was like, <laughs> and she just went happy with her knife. Yeah. That the first yeah. stab just. Oh, like, that was no brutal. no music just. And it was kind of un 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 unexpected too, because like I I think we all knew that something bad in that scene was gonna happen. Yeah. We knew she was gonna hurt him. We just didn't exactly <sighs> know how. Yeah. And then seeing that knife come out of nowhere and her just. Yeah. Go to town yeah. on him. But she kept going, and you heard the effects. It of was. It. That was brutal. It was savage. Yeah. Let me just go to the effects were yes. so awesome. Yeah, practical effects. Yes. Beautifully done. Super, super gory. Just out of this world gory. I think um, one of the scenes that had the gore that literally made me wince and like crawl up into mm. a ball in the theater seat was when Lorraine was stuck in the cellar oh. and she starts breaking open the the door with an axe with a beautiful reference to the shining <laughs> with Mr. Jack Torrance yeah. yeah sticks her face right in that she does bowl. <laughs> she does okay. um but she after she sticks her face in it to take mm -hmm. a look to see what's outside she puts her hand through the door to kind of feel for the locks to unlock herself. And she just gets her hand absolutely mutilated. Yeah, mangled. It, oh, it was so mangled. And it was gross. And it was like you could feel it in your hand. Yeah. And it just kind of made, I just cringed. I could not. I was like, ugh. Poor Jenna Ortega gets yeah. fucked up. In her her <laughs> fingers <laughs> were bending in ways that fingers should not. Yeah. It was, oh, it was so, it was gross. Yeah. And yeah, shout out to the effects team because 
Okay. That looked like a. It looked like her hand went through like a a tree chipper. Like oh, it just was mangled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the, I mean, this one maybe not as practical, but still fucking awesome. <laughs> Brittany Snow. Yes. Uh, Bobby Lynn is her character. <laughs> yeah, when she's coming to the aid of Pearl, thinking that she's standing at the edge of the dock to the lake and, uh, you know, trying to help her get back. And then uh, she slaps her, which is also just a cool and interesting, like, confrontation. It was kind of shocking, too. I don't think any yeah. of, like, I wasn't expecting her to get slapped. And when she slapped, I was just like, oh. And, and in that moment yeah. for me, I thought she was like, I was like, she is so coherent because you know you kind mm -hmm. of feel like she's like a little like lost or a little just out of her i don't know out of her own they just kind disconnected of, maybe yeah it, well i mean they kind Previously. of up until this point they they led us to believe that like without seeing her go off and hurt these people like before any of that started you're led to believe that she may have dementia Right. That she doesn't know where she is. She's not aware of what's going on. She just kind of wanders and she's fragile. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but even though her death is after most of the yeah. people, most of the guys at least, um, I still, I was like, whoa, she is just like, mm -hmm. yeah, Pearl slaps her and is like. The agility behind that. <laughs> yeah. And, and just straight up says, you know, you're luck. You don't even know what you have. And, and you're just flaunting it around and. Yeah, I don't know. She, she just stated so clear her motivations and just her mm -hmm. headspace right there. And then, uh, you know, when <laughs> Bobby Lynn starts talking back to her saying, okay, well, fuck you. I tried to help you. And she just yeah. pushes her into the lake, <laughs> which it still kind of catches you off guard a little bit, even though, you know, like, she's, she's probably going to push her at some point. But it's just like the kind of sure strength, like, the ferocity. <laughs> yeah, the ferocity yeah. is just so, like... She was determined. Yes. <laughs> Fuck you, you're going in the yeah. lake. And then she's like, bitch. She, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Yeah, the yeah. way that she said bitch. <laughs> right back at her. Yeah. And then an alligator just <laughs> chomps on her head, takes her down, does its twist. I like that attention to the detail. The death roll. Yeah, yeah, the death roll, exactly. Fuck. And the blood gurgling up. It just, oh. you know, Jaws. Felt like Jaws Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Yeah. So with this next, with that scene where um, the whole big smack and the pushing happens, we all know that slight moment after that she got pushed in, it like leaves a second yeah. to be like, oh, the yeah. alligator's in there. And then boom, Ryan the alligator gets that. her. <laughs> yeah. Savagery. Yeah. Also, I was just so glad to see Brittany Snow in a horror again. Oh my god, she's, she's so great. great. She's great. She's again. phenomenal. I love her. Yeah. She's great in every role she does, I think, but fond place in horror. This <laughs> character she knocked out of yes, the park too. Absolutely. It felt like she was meant for this this yeah, role. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Also, Kid Cudi. I think he blended in quite well yeah. with the rest of the cast. Absolutely. Especially in the era, too. Absolutely. I love suit. Oh, my God. He <laughs> looks so good. Yeah. The costume design was great in this movie. Everyone's outfits were straight on point with the era. Yeah. They looked good. They weren't too over the top. They weren't corny. They weren't too overtly yes. 70s. Yeah, to where it's like, okay, they're just trying so hard to be 70s. Yeah. <laughs> it just looked like average right. people with what they would wear yeah. in the 70s. You know, the makeup, the hair, everything. It just matched. Sound. Also oh. another, I don't know, just amazing job in this film with the sound. I will say one of the more notable moments in the sound design where I was like, oh my God, that's really interesting. Um, was when they were performing one of the sex scenes. I think it was Brittany Snow's character specifically. When she was moaning, the sound design took her moaning and used it yes. all throughout the film. Yes, okay, yes. But it was either slowed down mm -hmm. or it was where it was not really audible that it was moans. Yeah. It just kind of sounded like these like weird like kind yes. of tonal sounds throughout it. Or it was <laughs> yeah, or it was sped up where it would just be like ha ha 
and you're just like what and then or they would just take specific little portions of her moaning out yes and it was used right. repeatedly throughout the film yeah it was so smart yeah it was that yeah. specific sound to throughout the film it, it was just so eerie oh and they made it so haunting to be honest it reminded me of um suspiria the goblin yeah the goblin soundtrack in suspiria it definitely yeah. felt reminiscent. Those particular breathy, mm -hmm. sounds, the breathy and, sounds and the re repetition of it throughout, especially at certain points, it felt because yeah, the the Goblin soundtrack and those breathy vocalizations mm -hmm. in their track would come in at certain specific times in the yep. film. You know, besides the opening, just ah. random spots throughout. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought, and I also felt um, some. Some of the scoring or sound was reminiscent of Scream. And there's the, ah, man, it, I, I'm kind of forgetting now, but it, it had that similar kind of eerie, whistly, like, yeah, kind of yeah, 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 going on, which yeah. I, for me personally, you I associate, associate with Scream. And that's, I love, to me, their sound was so, and scoring was so, like, distinct to me, but it, mm -hmm. it reminded me of that. Well, not just the actual score, but like the music in the film with like yeah. Flea the Reaper. Yeah. And then wasn't that a Fleetwood Mac song that she was singing? Landslide. Yeah. It was just, it was all just great music. And yeah. I, I don't know, it put a smile to my face hearing those songs, even though they were, some of them took place in moments of like tragic ending. But like you hear that music and it's just kind of like, yeah. it brings you immediately into the era yeah. that it's in. Yeah, and when they were listening to the record after yes. they film some of the sex scenes and they're making dinner. Yeah. And it, it goes with, it matches like Mia Goth, Maxine's character. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's like something about being a star. Yes, or, you know? yes. And I was like, nice. Yeah. No, I noticed they did that a lot where like the, the song's lyrics had meaning in what was going to happen next in the film. Yeah. Like with, again, with Fear the Reaper, like he's getting into the car, he turns on the car and this song comes on and it's mm -hmm. talking about Fear the Reaper. And then all she of a sudden shows. there's this like creepy old lady, <laughs> yeah. like in standing in front of the car. Like, yeah, it was, it was kind of an interesting play. Yeah. I enjoyed it mm -hmm. for sure. Um, another interesting point I thought was, particularly shown through Lorraine but just the the idea of sexuality in this film and particularly when they're doing shooting the sex scenes with Maxine and you see Lorraine you know booming but she starts getting transfixed and it's also the part when when Pearl's watching through the window and everyone particularly those two girls mm -hmm. seem so transfixed on that scene and specifically on Maxine's sex scene you kind of get a sense of what they're craving. Because I feel like Lorraine's yeah. character, they call like a prude, you know? Yeah. And so she's kind of seeing the magic in yeah. a, I don't know, good sex. <laughs> but, um, but, and then Pearl craving what she is missing since she was young and everything. I don't know. That was just cool seeing the dynamic yeah. between the two characters for different reasons. But absolutely well not maybe not different reasons for the same reason yeah, but in different context yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 what i thought interesting too is how maxine read herself in terms of affirmation yeah in multiple yeah. scenes like she was this she is this girl in the film that multiple people envy you know and then she herself is having to sit there and like hype herself up yeah which I thought was just kind of interesting. I mean, I guess in a way it worked too, because her scene ended up being the one that everyone was yeah. just like transfixed on. So yeah, I will say, what besides watch it in theaters, stay after the oh, the, yes. the ending credits. There is an extra something something after. Should we just say it? <laughs> we hope everyone stayed for the after credit scene. Yeah. Um, if you haven't, maybe skip forward like a minute or two yeah but and, for and those of you go find it <laughs> yeah <laughs> try to find it online and watch it because it definitely um you don't want to miss it yeah but it looks super cool and basically they're saying they're going to do another film but it's going to be a prequel yeah and talk about pearl's story and where she, her background yes, and how she came to be <laughs> i think this film too left a lot to wonder 
And I don't think it's that situation where it's like audience assumption doesn't necessarily make for good writing. I don't think that's where we're at with this. I just think that they left a lot kind of open-ended because of these next few films that are going to... Well, I heard we heard that it was going to be a three-part series. Mm -hmm. um, and they already have the prequel, I, I guess, somewhat done. Yeah, I mean, they give you like a little mini trailer at the end. It's essentially, <laughs> yeah, it's essentially a trailer into the life of Pearl. So I'm really curious to see what questions are answered. Because yeah. I think we're all curious, like, who is Pearl? Why is she obsessing over these young women other than, you know, longing for her youth? And it's set in the 1920s. Yeah, the 1920s. And just the already the style that they gave with this little mini oh, trailer after the credits yeah. was cool. It's like you it said, gave uh, me Gone with mm -hmm. the Wind vibes. Gone with the Wind. And I said the sound of music. Yes. Just it's just super so fun. Saturated, bright colors, which is similar to Christine said after we had watched the movie, we we're talking about this end credits scene. And you were saying that it's like the like a uh, adults Fear Street. Oh yeah, it, that's that's what this whole trilogy is kind of giving me, or potential trilogy is kind of yeah. giving me the vibes of different eras of being an adult Fear, Fear Street, which is like the different eras. Um, it being scary and kind of subversive in its own way, but like with their specific style yeah. to for yeah. those different eras. Yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm here for it. I'm curious to see what the third installment will be. It looks pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> this one looks nuts. It looks I, like they already had a lot of footage for that little yeah. mini trailer. Yeah. So I wonder how much they actually have of that and will be actually in that film from what we saw. I'm all for finding out how yeah. truly batshit crazy Pearl God was. Damn. Yeah. Because we already know how batshit crazy she is. Like, what led up to this? Yeah. I, I just loved it. It was great. great. We both had a great time watching it. I, yeah, I say go see it. I have nothing but good things to say about it. I think you'll enjoy it. Yes, yes please go see it. I wanted to know, was there anything that you disliked or would have wanted differently out of any sort of situation in this film? Like, was there just something that you just didn't like? Dare I say we both say no? <laughs> I say no. There's nothing yeah. I can think of that... I don't know, would be better or, or yeah, that I didn't like. It all f felt like it fit so well. I agree. And I, there's nothing about it that I didn't like that I played out the way different. it should have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I liked it. There's yeah. no qualms here. So excited to have Ty yeah. West back. Yes, <laughs> With Ty a, West. You know, his own film. Give us more. more. We're here for it. We love Give your films. Give us more. But with that said, Adam, since you saw it with us, do you have any comments, questions, anything you want to add in? Yeah, what's your what's your take on it? Um, yeah, what I well, you mentioned the intercutting with the editing and uh RG's character, he says something early on where he's saying like um he thinks, you know, that that porn can be art art artistic. And he's like, yeah, we just got to follow, like, the French, like, avant-garde. Oh, yeah. And that's, like, literally, like, Godard is, like, the first, like, thing that they talk about with avant-garde, yep. with intercutting. So I thought it was, like, <laughs> yeah. interesting that they oh added God. that to yeah. the editing yeah, yeah, style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Film school. Film school. <laughs> <laughs> what? Favorite scene. Yeah, it was, like, favorite scene, favorite kill. Oh, um, I really liked, um, what's the, what's the cowboy hat guy? Wayne. Name? Wayne. Wayne. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really liked his scene because I was like, I mean, yeah, I knew it was, something was going to like happen or, with his eye or something like that. But um, the like leading up to it, um, the nail where you're just like staring at it and you know he's going to step on it. You oh, know he's gonna step I on forgot it. about that part. <laughs> God. Oh yeah! <laughs> it's like, seat injuries. Oh, Everyone in that theater audibly winced when he yes. stepped on it. So Lorraine, yeah, in the basement, like yeah, when she pulls the light switch, and then it cuts straight into his eyeball getting like stabbed. That was like, I thought that was brilliant. That was so cool. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. It's like you're expecting it, and then obviously, like. Like for the same thing, like you you were expecting something bad to happen as soon as she like pulled that that um switch, 
but that was not like at the same time it's not, not what you were expecting not gonna yeah not expected at all well also the build up the build up of that scene too when wayne's in the barn and after after he steps on the nail it's like it just stays for so long just him in the barn calling out for rj or whoever and talking about his foot and everything and kind of it keeps switching to sh wider shots of the barn with all this shadowed space around him so i was just like anticipating pearl to be in the shadows and to just kind of come out from the shadows and like you know kill him there but then once you saw movement behind the holes in the wall and you realize that there's someone behind there then and he got close to it yeah i was like okay here is where but i just yeah the build up of that scene was great i will say with the closing kind of like statement i do want to see it again because i want to see what i missed while i'm like frantically scanning the screen and not like you know because you you can't like I feel like there are a lot of times when the shot is so wide that you're not having focus because you're you're scanning the entire screen over and over and over again. And I just want to see if maybe some nuance was lost in the first screening. And I want to see if there are things that like we missed. And I just want to go into it now knowing what I know to see if there's any little like Easter egg clues like leading up to it as well. Like I just... I think this movie is so fitting for a second screening. Like, I yeah. think it's definitely something that has rewatchability. Yeah. Dolby. Yeah. <laughs> Please go see it in theaters. Highly yes. recommend. Well, you know what they say. <laughs> or what we say. <laughs> you know what we say. We always say. I'll, I'll be right back. back.